Hey makeup lovers, it's James here back with another Kit Bits makeup review. So I'm going to be taking you on a deep dive into my makeup kit over the next few weeks and showing you some of my favourite products, things I've picked up along the way on my travels and also be highlighting some things that I'm lucky enough to be sent here in the studio. So let's start with the foundation. Now um, I'm a real, I'm kind of really tricky when it comes to foundations. I don't often switch the formulas out in my kit because I'm die hard to certain formulas but this one just might make it. So let's um, start with the beautiful new Soft Matte Complete Foundation from NARS. So before I go into the foundation, I just wanted to show you, so I know I'm, I'm super spoiled. Oftentimes I'll get sent um, beautiful PR packages, but this one really rocked my world. So this is, how, this is what came along with the foundations. And I thought, okay, that's cute, until I opened it up. And um, you have this amazing digi screen, which takes you on a bit of a journey. Believe that makeup shouldn't cover your skin. Amazing, I just thought it was such an innovative way um, to um, talk about new foundation. And I think for me, NARS, you know, they've been around for quite a while, but they still feel super fresh, really new. I love the touch, the feel, the design of any of their um, products and, and formulas. I'm such a big fan. So, yes, thank you, NARS, for that. That was amazing. Okay, let's get into the formula itself. First of all, I mean, come on, you had me at packaging. Um, so, this is shade. 3.5 Salzburg, um, but what I like about NARS is that kind of soft touch feel. So this um, foundation is full coverage, soft matte, and it um, stays true all day, apparently. Um, so I have a set of four shades, a really good selection. What I love about NARS is that, you know, this foundation comes in 34 shades, there's a matching concealer which comes in 30 shades as well, um, and they've given me a really good cross section of the, um, the range there. Um, there's not my shade, but what I thought I'd do, um, I've not really had a chance to properly try this yet on set because we've not been working as much, um, but I'm definitely going to try it um, live for you on this and just see how we get on. So I had to mix two shades. I mixed the shade medium deep three and the light 3.5. So I mixed these two. And I'm going to apply it on my skin using the MyKitco 0.7 brush, which I always refer to. It's kind of like a, if a beauty blender were a brush, you'd get the 0.7. It's really densely packed. It's a synthetic tip. Um, and you know, every now and again, I will put a little bit of base on, especially if I'm kind of under bright lights like this. So let's see how we're going on. I'm going to come in really close. Um, so with a matte foundation, what I think would have put me off in the past, maybe from using it or choosing a matte foundation would be the thought that it would feel really heavy on the skin and it would, you know, it would feel a bit too dense. But I've got to say first things first, uh, first impressions of this one, it feels really light, like it feels quite cooling. It feels, even actually when you take it out of the, um, when you take it out of the bottle, it has a very liquid texture which I like but then let me just grab a little mirror so I can see exactly what I'm doing okay a little warm but hey that's okay I am mixing a shade here okay close up on my skin so I'm kind of I am a bit of a sticker when it comes to skincare and so I've been really I've been using these Elemis face pads to make sure that my skin's super smooth especially in the, the winter months here in the UK my skin can get a little bit dry so I've been using some resurfacing pads, but even on my skin, you know, that's looking pretty natural. So I'm buffing it all the way in with the 0.7 brush, doing quite a quick job of it. You can tell I don't often wear foundation, but okay, it's a little dark. I'm all right with that. But the texture is kind of nice. Okay, so it's giving me first impressions from like a really non-biased point of view. That foundation is giving me a soft matte finish, which is exactly what it does on the says it does on the tin. So, in terms of coverage wise, I mean you could definitely build that up into something that felt a little bit more covered, covering if you wanted to. But you know, just as a t for a tiny little bit, which I've just mixed on my my Kiko palette there, like a little bit really went a long way. So let me just show you the formula and swatch on the back of my hands. So I'm going to take the, the lighter shade, the 3.5 just to give you an idea of how liquid it is. Let's drop a tiny bit out and let's work that into the skin. So God, there is coverage in that foundation. You know, that's just a tiny little drop there and it definitely goes a long way. And then it seems to set down. There's no pow powderiness to it. It's not feeling, it's not looking cakey and it does have that very soft matte finish. So 
First impressions, I'm really excited to use, use this on a beauty shoot because I like, like when the camera gets close in to put a foundation to the test, really to the test, but um, I'm liking it. So you get 1.5 fluid ounces, 45 mil, and that one is 28 pounds. So actually the price point's pretty good um, for a foundation. And I'm just gonna be nice and golden for the rest of this video. That's okay. Okay, so first impressions, we like it. Let's move on to the concealer. So there's 30 shades of the concealer um, in the NARS. And I think this may have been around a little while. Again, I'm not too sure. This is the um, soft matte concealer. It comes in a really handy little pot size like this. This one is 24 pounds, so again, it's pretty good. You get a lot of uh, concealer in there. I'm just gonna take a spatula and just try a little bit of this on my skin and see how we get on. So at the moment, I'm really enjoying this brush. It's the Maikiko 013. Um, this is a multi brush. It's a domed multi and it is a, is a synthetic brush. So this has been literally actually um, best-selling brush um, so to date. Because it is a multi brush, it does so many things. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the concealer on the back of my spatula there. And I generally would get a bit of a redness around the nose. So why I like to use this brush for concealing is because it gives me quite a lot of surface area, as you can see, and the synthetic fibers are really soft, but they're really dense as well. So you're gonna be able to, you know, buff in your concealer exactly where needed. It's great for underneath the eyes as well. You know, if you want to precision powder, it's a super handy little brush for doing that. Um, and that is a really lightweight texture, I'm feeling it. And then I'm going to buff that all the way in. And those two formulas seem to work perfectly together. You know, I'm not getting any streaking. It's not looking dry. I'm a bit of a fan. Okay. But again, first impressions of the concealer. Loving the smooth formula of it. You could definitely build up the coverage if needed. Um, but my golden rule when I'm applying any kind of concealer, be it liquid or cream, I always use a, a, a quite a large, soft, fluffy brush to really help you to um, control that formula. So you can even take something that's really full coverage and, and blend it down to the skin. So let's move on from foundation and concealer for a second. Now I'm all covered. Um, let's move on to something. Let's talk about a tool, a gadget, something that um, Actually, I discovered this on one of my many cosmetic trips in Japan. Um, when I lived in Asia, I would be in Japan maybe three or four times a year, so I would always make a beeline for any of the um, like um, drug stores and just spend hours, basically days sometimes, shopping for makeup and makeup accessories. So this, um, I came across on one of my many visits to Japan. And so this is the Koji Lash Curler. So this is in my kit, and what I like about it is um, it comes in a little case, which is super fancy. So. What that helps, it kind of keeps it clean, it makes sure that it doesn't get squished in your kit, um, and it just keeps it all in one place. So that's the Koji Lash Curler in the little case. Okay, so you might, might be thinking this is, okay, how can the Lash Curler be different from the next? What I like about this one, in the past when I've tried different other Lash Curlers, they almost, there's not enough spring in them. With the Koji Lash Curler, there's a really nice bounce. So when you're curling the lash, you can really kind of press it and you can really feel it working the lash and curling the lash. Um, and also the bend, the curve, is quite a gentle curve. Now this for me is really important when I'm curling people's lashes. If the curve's a little bit too severe, it can pinch either side of the eye and you can end up, you know, with things going wrong. So with the Koji, because it is a little bit more of a gentle curve, it's a Japanese made um, lash curler, so that might have something to do with it, but um, it feels really comfortable. So it's a good spring, a good bounce, a gentle curve, comes complete with a snazzy little um, case as well. And this is how you'll find it if you were to buy it. So I did a little bit of research. If you're wondering how you're gonna get hold of something that's um, made in Japan, you can actually pick um, this up on Amazon. I had a look earlier, there was a few on there. Um, but also eBay, you can get brand new ones on eBay in the packaging. Um, and I think they retail for around around 20 pounds. Then obviously with postage and packaging on top. But um, it's my, it's my favorite lash curler. I've tried many others, including the Shumura um, ones over the years, and I keep going back to this guy. So um, check it out. If you're a fan of lash, um, a good lash curler, check out the Koji, K-O-J-I, lash curler, um, and let me know how you get on with it. So that's just one of my favorite tools. Um, moving on to something a little bit colorful. So um, again, I'm gonna dip into um, an indie brand 
um, from a fellow makeup artist, a very, very talented makeup artist, Carl, Carla Powell. And, and Carla Rose, Rose, as she's now known, she's, she was married last year. Um, so when I first saw these, that, you know, that whole multi-chrome thing, such a, such a moment right now, those um, eyeshadows and pigments that bend the light and come up, come up with all of these different shades. Um, and I think Carla was one of the first people to market with those and she's doing amazingly well. Her um, pigments are magical. Um, but then these um, came the other week. Um, so it's the Carla Powell Shadow Potion. So I have two shades here. And again, just going back to my love for anything creamy or liquid, um, Carla has come up with the most genius gel formula, which is um, all of her prog products are cruelty free and vegan and handmade in the UK. Um, I know that she, she's dedicated so much time and effort and she's done a, such an amazing job with the brand. So I have two of these shades. Now, for me, I have to wait for, an, for an, an, a special occasion to use something like this because it is so magical. I kind of, when I, when I plan to use it, I want to use it big and I want to use it really strong um, and just make the most of the formula. So I've swatched a couple, which I'll show you on the back of my hand in just a second. So shades here, the blue one is shade Lullaby, which is, it bends like it's violet slash green slash almost like a bronze gold. And then the green shade Snooze, this one flashes a beautiful burgundy and the most amazing kind of green. It's like a peacock feather. Okay, so let's just go back to my palette for a second. My trusty, my Kiko Play palette. I'm just gonna swatch these. So they are a gel formula, but they dry down and they set and they're so much resistant. So I'm just gonna take my fingertips. Let's have a little look at this magic close up. So even though we've got a cream gel formula, we're still getting all of that amazing, amazing pigment. Then you can see when it really catches the light, it's like a beetle shell. That multi-chrome flashes off all of these different shades. So <clears throat> in the shoot that I did with them just the other week, um, I used this at the very end of the shoot. My model Paris had, she already had a full eye look on. And I was like, okay, maybe it's time that we got, um, I dipped into those Carla Powell, Powell shadow potions and I just painted it over the top. Literally, it just went right over the shadow she was wearing. It was smooth, it was really easy to apply. In fact, there's a video um, of me applying it. So for these, I don't like to blend them out too much. I feel like they're better when they're, they're applied really bold. Um, so I use the My Kiko 1.4 My Cream Shadow Brush, which is a synthetic brush designed specifically for working with creams um, to help me to really glide and, and shape it. And that's, um, that's when you know, I totally fell in love with them. Okay, so let's have a look at the other shade. So this one is called Lullaby. This one is a beautiful amethyst purple, which flashes blue. I'm gonna pop some here. There you can see you get that amazing green. And then, oh my God, I'm gonna dislocate my wrist trying to show you guys this. Let me pop it there, it might be easier. Yeah, that's better. So it goes from that insane jade back to a purple, to a blue. Stunning, I think there's four shades in the range of those, of the shadow potions. I know Carla's um, bringing pastels to, um, to the range really soon. And again, just remove so easily. Um, so loving those, like somebody who's onto something new and different and really not scared to push the boundaries of makeup and it, it inspires me to do different looks. So thank you Carla for those, stunning. Um, I'd love to check out the other two shades as well. Okay, so from something colourful, let's move on to something a bit more muted. Um, and this was a little um, shadow stick. And again, um, I'm a fan of just the convenience of, some, of things like shadow sticks. I just think you get impact really quickly. Um, and oftentimes I'll use them when, you know, I just want it like a quick base to the eye. I'm not really big on applying a lot of concealer to the eye, really, if I'm honest. I prefer to maybe use an eye paint or a shadow stick, something that gives me a bit of like oomph really quickly. Um, so this is from the amazing brand Nude Sticks. So I just love the, um, the girls, their concept of, of, of nude, nude sticks, that ease of it. You know, everything's super conveniently packaged in a stick form, whether it's a blush or whether it's an eyeshadow or a lip, lip, lip and cheek duo. It's kind of just for that makeup artist or make, makeup lover on the go that you just want something quick and easy um, with a beautiful formula. So this one is big. Now I did an eye look on this with this. Now what I like about this shade in particular is that it's matte, there's no shimmer to it. Um, so just going back to the eye, um, idea of not basing the lid with any concealer first, 
um, in the eye look that I created with Fig, um, I just use this over a bare lid. So let's have a close up look. So first of all, you'll notice with anything from Nude 6, they have the right amount of blend in their formulas. It feels really dreamy and creamy when you blend it. You know, it gives you enough playtime if you want to blend that out. You can wear it bold, you can wear it sheer, and that's true of all of the formulas. Um, but in particular, this one, Fig, is quite magical. So I would describe it as a really rich, nutty brown. There's a little bit of, of an almost like pink tone underneath it. Um, it's not a grey brown at all, which make it, makes it really forgiving on most, unlike many skin tones. So I'm just going to blend that out and just see what we have. Just so you can see as an eyeshadow, you know, even if you were to wash this over with the softest of brushes, you're going to get that beautiful tone of almost like a um, shiitake mushroom brown. And then once it sets, it, dry, it sets down and it doesn't, um, doesn't go anywhere. So that one is fig. So I really just love that on its own, you know, just to wrap around the lid. If, you're, if you want a softer blend, what I do is I'll take a brush and just take the formula straight from the tip of the, um, the shadow stick, then take it onto the eye, you know, if you're using it on yourself. Um, but if you want a bit more intensity, just scribble it straight away onto the eye and you can take your soft blending brush and just buff it out and use it as a base for shadows or wear it on its own. Um, so that's the Magnetic Matte Eye Colour in shade Fig. And those are £20 and you can get nude sticks, you know, whether you're shopping at um, Beauty Bay or um, Look Fantastic or in their own store, you can get those guys pretty much um, everywhere. So another favourite and I'm hoping, girls, please, please, please make more matte shades because I'm obsessed um, and I would love to see more. Okay, so finishing off with something just like a really good kit essential. I always say nothing really um, dictates a trend, a season or a, an era like an eyebrow. And there's, there's always something happening with brows. Um, and the clever guys over at HD Brows um, have formulated, I would say, pretty much the ultimate brow gel. In fact, it's so strong they've called it a brow glue, which I was like, that's a bold claim. But actually, it does really glue the brows. Um, so um, there's obviously some amazing um, brow treatments out there and different products to use. I'm a huge fan of soap brows as well for that beautiful laminated, very flattened brow that feels quite beautiful and fluffy in editorial. But I'm really appreciating what brow, um, HG Brows have done here because they've kept us, they've given us a gel formula. So this is my personal one, so I'm gonna use it myself. Um, so my brows do need a bit of taming. And so I was, you know, I was like, okay, let's see, HG Brows, how you get on with that brow glue. And what I like about it, instead of using something that flattens the brows, is it keeps the softness in them, but it really lifts your brows as well. So, you know, there's occasions where I, when I use something like a soap brows, if I want that very kind of laminated, flattened effect. But if I just want to do like a quick, fluffed up, soft, softer, brow, softer brow that still has texture in it, then I'm switching out to the um, to the brow glue, and I know this has been crazy um, crazy popular since you, since you, since it launched, um, tongue tied, and that one is sixteen pounds, and I would fully recommend it if you're a fan of brows. You know, I put a little bit of colour in my brows um, just before I started the video, but that, if you can see, it's, I've, got, I've got a few crazy long ones there, but it helps you to get that spikiness, that texture and then it's gonna dry down. So, you know, if you just wanted to add a little bit of oomph to your eyebrows, then check it out. That's HG Brow Glue, um, HG Brows Brow Glue. And that is my one. And I've also got one for the kids as well. Okay, guys, that is my kit bits for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. And thank you so much for watching. Um, and leave any comments below and give me some ideas on what you might want to see next. Um, but for now, guys, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.